Hello, everybody. Welcome to our forum. Today's forum is for parents and high school students. Uh, we're so excited. Um, today is still Chinese New Year, so for all the people who celebrate this Lunar New Year, we would like to say Happy New Year, and thank you so much uh, for spending your time together with us this afternoon instead of going anywhere else. Uh, so today, we're, uh, this event is co-organized by Thinking TV and Keras. Uh, Keras is, well, later on you're going to learn about the, you know, exciting news about Keras. But today's event, uh, we want to provide a platform and also the uh, helpful and useful information for the parents and students. Uh, because there are so many things you need to learn uh, before you go to college. Um, so we have the expert here. We also have the serial entrepreneurs are going to share their experience with you. A little bit about uh, us, Thinning TV, and I know that some of you are from Paris and some of you are from Thinning TV, so this is our contact. Uh, if you would like to, um, you know, looking for more information about what we do, and you can contact Sandy at DinningTV.com or call this phone number, 408-396-2601 one and also follow us on WeChat. We are the Silicon Valley Innovation Channel and also the vo voice of Silicon Valley Asian Americans. Uh, we open our platform and collaborations for, with all kinds of organizations. Um, a little bit about our first speaker here. That's my friend Rebecca. Yeah. So Rebecca is a co-founder and CEO of Kairos.ai. She previously founded a big data and machine learning startup, Scala. Before Scala, she worked as one of the founding members at Google Cloud for six years. Rebecca received her master's degree in engineering and MBA from University of British Columbia. So let's join me and welcome Rebecca. Thank you. Thanks very much. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to all the family and friends who join us today. We want to make sure that you are getting useful information. We will use your time judiciously. Um, so first of all, special thanks to Ding Ding TV, especially Diana and uh, Sandy, who's put a lot of effort in uh, bringing this audience together. Um, we also have honored guest speakers, which I will get into in just a little bit. Uh, allow me to share my screen so that you can see. Uh, let me know if everybody can see my screen. Yes, we can see. Thank you. Okay, excellent. So for the next hour, we will be doing a quick speaker introduction. Then Ben, Ellen, and the Rod, they will get into the college prep strategy, also develop an executable for, uh, for the plan. And uh, we will then share with you what Kairos community is about, what are the su support and services that we will be providing you. Now, I must apologize that because of the audience today, we're mainly speaking English. However, for many of the native Chinese speakers, we will reserve the Q&A section for Chinese um, native speakers to ask questions. Uh,所以第一个非常抱歉哈,今天因为观众比较多,所以我们会用英文讲座,但是到了最后的时候,有问答的时候,可以用中文提问。那么如果还有需要的话呢,我们可以设立一对一,呃,可以在详细的一些解
ad tech company, a public listed one for the past few years. And Cindy fully understand the college prep um, and application processes, as well as the um, unmet needs. So she can share with you in the follow up sessions. But more specifically, I would like to introduce our honor speaker, Ben Chen, today. And Ben graduated from Harvard, um, MIT, and University of Chicago, as well as a Quest Scholar at Stanford University. All the degrees that I wish I could have gotten, but was not able to. Ben also has been spending the last 10 plus years mentoring 200 plus students. Um, high schoolers, international students, and help them to develop their personal interest and deepen their experience for high school and ultimately result in the successful application to many top tier universities, including Harvard, Yale, MIT, Stanford, Columbia, etc. So please do um, use this opportunity to ask them many questions and uh, they will share their experience, the best practices, what worked, what did not work for those students. Of course, um, Ben has been very successful in many areas uh, professionally. He also previously worked at McKinsey, Goldman Sachs and run his own hedge fund. So with that, um, let me give the floor to Ben, Ellen and Rod and this team will walk us through the college prep strategy, as well as how to do it, how to develop an executable plan. Now, let me stop sharing. Oh, I should continue to share, but I will be driving the slides forward. So um, Ellen, Rod, Ben, take it over from here. Uh, could you pull up your screen for, PPT, for the PowerPoint? I can see. Uh, your screen. Yeah, sorry. Got it. Yes. I have the PowerPoint open. Um, hey guys, uh, so this is Ben, um, and um, we'll be speaking with my uh, team, uh, Alan and Rod. Alan is based in the U.S., um, Rod is based in Shanghai, and uh, I'm based in Shanghai as well, but we're not in the same office right now. We're both working from home today. Um, and also, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, and also thank you, uh, Rebecca and uh, Cindy and Diana for making this uh, a possible uh, video uh, opportunity for, for, uh, for all the parents. So I think I'll jump right into um, the, the topic today, uh, which is when and, and how to write great essays. So that's actually step number three already. Um, prior to that, you have to kind of prepare for two extra steps. The first step would be discover what you're good at. And then the second step is execute, do as you said. And finally, it's about telling what you did and why to the admissions officer uh, of the schools that you're applying. And specifically in phase one, discover what you're good at. Um, that's a long-term process. And I think that's the hardest Thing about parenting and also about students discovering what they're interested in. So I would say, um, you know, do the following. Um, but there is no hard and fast rule uh, with respect to how you want to discover. Some people are naturally, you know, talented uh, or smart or they're geniuses. Others need time to find out who they are. Um, and I think the majority is the latter. I'm certainly the, the latter proportion. So the first step would be make a list of, of projects you, that you want to try. You know, try different things. Don't lock yourself to just do math and science because uh, your parents said, uh, you know, some people, you know, while being Chinese, Asian, male, are not necessarily good in math and science. And I think it's a, it's a very waste of resources for everybody to do uh, math Olympics, um, you know, at the, you know, at the whole population level. And if you're interested in humanities, go, you know, go discover yourself through these projects. Second would be discover your passion and what you're good at while you're making and doing the projects that you want to try. 
third is narrow down to one or two core interests. This is very relevant for top 20 college applicants um, because that is the main difference between um, very top schools that have very limited resources. They want to give to the people who can take advantage of the resources versus uh, larger schools and um, you know, slightly lower ranking schools. Fourth, find resources to create in-depth projects that make you stand out. This is actually critical. And um, so the attitude really matters a lot. Um, you know, at the place that I um, help mentor, it's called Chou Xue Shi. Uh, the first word is Chou, right? It's, it's you're, you're begging for knowledge and, um, you know, don't expect people to roll out red carpets for you while you're learning. And, um, you know, doing internships, for example, uh, you're pretty much at the, um, the lowest of the, the, the totem pool. Um, the last is know what colleges are looking for in you. Um, you know, you have to find your special angle and who you are. The more unique you are and the more specialized you are, I think the higher chance of your getting into um, school. Now, I think that's different between, there's a slight difference between U.S. applicants versus Chinese applicants. Um, um, fair or not, I think it's more difficult to, um, to apply from China. And so you have to even know yourself a bit more uh, if you're applying from China. Moving on to phase two, execute, do as you said, you know, this is about execution, right? Uh, you have strategized, now you need to execute. First, try out in-school clubs. This is risk-free and it's free. And this is mostly the breadth of activities that you need to prepare. Second, possibly attend summer schools. Um, you know, again, this is not necessary, but it's a way for you to connect with college professors and learn their latest thinking and their latest research. Third is find research assistantship, um, along with fourth, secure corporate internship. Um, these are important. These are what I call in-depth activities that really could make you stand out. And then fifth, commit to a community service, right? So. I think in American colleges, community service is a big, a big part of who you are. Uh, you know, it's giving back uh, to the community from the knowledge and the learning and the resources that you picked up from top schools. And so they want to see a pattern of it. And you shouldn't just be volunteer everywhere or volunteer at the remote area of Guizhou, right? Like everybody who's kind of, uh, who, you know, who wants to do that because that's what they're being told. Do something that's related to um, what you're interested in, uh, something that's related to yourself. Uh, don't just do what everybody else is doing. Um, six, cover breadth and depth uh, when choosing these extracurricular activities. Um, this is pretty much the summary of what we just talked about, the former uh, six points. Uh, next, seven, network with your high school alumnus. This is important. Uh, there's a lot of resources that you can take advantage, not just your brother, sister, you know, uncle, mother, and, and father. Uh, there's a lot. And if you reach out to these alumnus, even, uh, you know, alumnus who are, who have graduated from college, uh, that could be helpful. Uh, eighth, join admission officers, high school visits if offered. I think this is important because it shows uh, that you care. It shows that you're interested in a particular school. And then last, visit campus and take a tour. Uh, if you have the resources and time and money, go do it. I think it's nice. Uh, it's, um, uh, you know, when I was applying to college, I didn't do it. I didn't even know where Harvard was. Uh, so, but I think it is good to know, you know, the college, the campus, um, the professors, and, um, you know, the students there. Moving on to phase three, uh, reflect and tell what you did and why. This is the part where you're actually writing. If you have done the first phase and for, uh, phase one and two well, uh, phase three comes naturally. So this is where you delineate your story when and how to write great essays. Um, and here, are, I think there are four maybe steps. One is strategize school application. Uh, I know this is very broad and we'll get, get into that. Second is communicate why high school counselors 
uh, communicate with your high school counselors effectively. Uh, understand, you know, learn from these people. Uh, these are mentors who have known, and this is their job to help you with uh, navigating through the uh, college application process. Third is ask meaningful recommendations, both in and outside of school. Recommendation matters a lot. And a good recommendation letter, I think, is uh, composed of two things. One, it's, um, you know, who's writing it? You know, how important is this person? But also equally, if not more important, is a second point, and that is that uh, the person that's recommending you really needs to know you well. Moving on to the very last point, prepare alumni uh, interviews and third party interviews early. This is important. Uh, I think it's important for American applicants as well as Chinese applicants. Um, uh, third party interviews uh, tells about your language capability, uh, but it's also an opportunity for you to demonstrate your interest and passion. Alumni interview is you know, mostly about it's a repetition of your essays, and we'll get, get into that. Sorry, that took a long time to cover this slide. It's an important slide. Um, Alan, you want to take this on? I think Sorry. I'm going to take this. Oh. Uh, yeah, right. Go for it. All right. Thank you, Ben and Rebecca. Um, now I'm going to talk about when to prepare your college essays and uh, how to prepare them. So first, um, we usually divide the college application essays into four categories. So the one, the most important one, personal statement, and then why major? So if you're you know, going to study biology, so why do you choose biology? And then why school? If you are applying to Harvard, Harvard will ask you, why are you applying to Harvard? And then there are some other supplements. Um, some school asks for even eight uh, small essays just ask you your favorite uh, movies, your favorite books, and some are asking more deep question about uh, social problems. And we're going to get to that later. So um, if you are applying to eight schools, um, chances are you're going to write about 10 to 20 essays. Um, most of the time, you will only need to write one personal statement, and that's for from uh, the Common App. So Common Application uh, give students seven options, seven essay prompts, and you will going to choose one of them and write about it. And that's, and we recommend you to start your personal statement as soon as possible, because that's how you're going to tell the story and how you're going to present yourself to the, um, the college admission officers. And then there's why major, and, you know, uh, I will put this to the second priority, but you also want to start this as soon as possible so that you will know your story and uh, integrate your story into the personal statements as well. And then there's Y School. Uh, we recommend you to start around August or September after you make your finalize your college application list. And then the, other, the, the, the final ones are going to be the other supplements. So that's all the small assets that you're going to write the last. So we put that to the third priority. Yeah, I just want to add, add, add a few points. So the, the reason I put uh, personal statement and why major as ASAP, you don't have to start when you're ninth grade, but it's important to start doing phase one, phase two, which is thinking about what you might be interested in and also executing on it. And that's why um, we put ASAP. It's not that you have to write personal statement uh, or major, why major, but you have to start doing those things. Uh, otherwise, they, you know, they're fictions, right? Why school? I mean, let's face it, we're all applying to the same schools. So it's not like you have a really special case um, of why you want to apply to Harvard, right? Uh, it's just a good school and a lot of people want to apply. Um, so you don't have to, you know, in my personal opinion, you don't have to, you know, think about why until when you're applying. And the same thing is true for other supplements for the same reason. Yep, thanks, Ben. Uh, sure. The back of next page, please. All right. How do you prepare for a personal statement? So uh, as I mentioned earlier, you will choose one from the seven prompts. And usually the top school applicants have their personal uh, statement revised for 15 to 20 iterations. So you definitely want to start early to prepare. Um, at first, um, it's going to be hard. So 
I will recommend you just to do free writing, write about what you have done, what are you thinking, what are you planning to do in the future. And after rounds of rounds of iteration and revision, you will find out a story and then you will finalize your story angle and how to present yourself to the uh, admission officers. And a, a great personal statement tells a story that demonstrates your past commitment to your passion and also your internal drive to leverage college education to achieve the long-term goal. And this is what the, the admission officer want to hear. So um, now here we have an example. So let's say a student, Jack. Jack joined the varsity soccer team when he was in high school. And after a year of training, he realized that he had learned the most from playing against other schools and wanted to use data analysis to improve. So now he's about junior or sophomore, and now he has taken the AP statistics class at school. And also he used his own time and summer break to take some Coursera courses on his own to learn data analysis. So he reached out to the coach and, the, and his desk teacher to analyze the past game data and adjust their training plan according to the, stat, uh, the statistical analysis. So here you can say, Jack's initiative and efforts finally paid off a year after and helped his team enter top three in the league for the first time in 10 years. So from this story, you can see the trajectory from a high school freshman and to a successful team member, a leader at school when, he's, when he was in his uh, junior and senior year. And that's the story of his personal growth and his contribution to the community and the team. And that's a great story that the college admission uh, officer would like to, to see and would like to welcome students like this to join their community so that he can make further contribution. So I, when, I, when I first read this um, case study or a case uh, put out by Alan, I thought it was a really cool um, example. Uh, you know, imagine what most Chinese students would be applying statistics for, right? Um, the reason, uh, maybe they're good in math. Maybe it's a, it's a job that you, you know, you can find jobs, um, you know. So it's very uh, um, practical and applicable. Uh, but here, this is, you know, based on interest in sports as well as statistics to achieve a common goal that's not necessarily pre-professional. So I think this is a powerful example that is, you know, interesting. And for, for anybody who has um, um, watched the movie Moneyball, uh, you know, this is kind of, this reminds me of that movie Moneyball. And for those who haven't watched it, I, I highly recommend it. Um, you know, I use statistics and uh, stochastic statistics to calculate the range of outcomes you know, of the clinical trials and our probability of success on a daily basis. And so um, I think this is a great example. And just kind of going back to the second bullet point, a great personal statement tells a story that demonstrates your past commitment to passion and your internal drive to leverage college education to achieve the long-term goal. This is really a complicated sentence, right? I mean, it's like, wow, wow, a lot of big words, you know, a lot of passion, a lot of long-term goal. I think um, the, the simple uh, way of saying it, maybe another way of saying it is that you have to do something that shows that you know what you are, where you're going. And this matters a lot um, because four years of college flies by. And, uh, you know, for people, for example, people like myself, um, you know, who comes from uh, not rich families, um, I need to be thinking what I'm interested in and what I'm good at and um, you know how to make a living, but at the same time also be interesting, right? So um, I think that's the hard part. And that's also the interesting part that makes you stand out. So you know, for every challenge there is, a, um, or for, for every uh, possible difficulty, uh, I think there's also, for every challenge, there's also a, a, a really good opportunity. So make sure you have a knife for it. Thanks, Ben. And now uh, let's move on to why major. So usually admission officer want to see your intellectual curiosity and also the true motivation for the field that you want to study. 
So uh, a convincing essay should answer the following three questions. What have you done to dive deeper into your field of interest? And what drew you into the subject? And at last, how will majoring, say, biology or literature help you achieve your life or career goals? So let's welcome Jack back and let's see he, how he is going to answer this question. So Jack wants to study stats and computer science in college. And he has taken AP statistic at high school. So we know he's a driven person and he likes to learn. And also even better, he has taken three college level programming classes on Coursera on his own time. So he's showing that he's devoting his free time or the fun time to study the hardcore knowledge and skills. And then he, he took the initiative to apply data analysis skills to help improve team performance, right? So that's, that's a, a, a demonstration of how he's using his deep knowledge to dive even deeper to apply the skills to the real world. And then in the future, he wants to use big data to guide policymakers in combating, combating poverty and global warming. So now we know he's a responsible citizen and he wants to uh, major in statistics and computer science, not only just to make quick money, but to achieve his life goal, to have a meaning. So having a degree in stats and CS will enable him to understand sophisticated theories and master statistical tools to deliver actionable insights. So here, you know, it's just a few sentences, but he already tell you the three, uh, his motivation and what he has done. So an essay like this will definitely stand out to the commission, uh, to the admission committee, and he's very likely to be chosen for his start. I, I also wanted to add, so you can see from the previous example where he wants to learn stats to help his team to win the championship, right? Now it's elevating to he wanting to use big data to guide policymaker in combating poverty and global warming. Now, if that's true, if that is truly what Jack is interested in, he just elevated himself in a very big way, and it's very powerful. Um, you know, not everybody have the same you know goal, but it is important to sort of you know take take the initiative, think about what you want to do to to do long term. You don't have to marry to it, uh, be married to it, but you have to you know think about. It. Um, how you want to use this in the future, assuming you're not playing a ball game and, uh, uh, you know, baseball uh, professionally. Yep, exactly. Now, Alan is going to talk about why school. Thanks, Rod. Yep. Thank you, Rod. Thank you. <laughs> so for why school essays, it's kind of quite similar with my uh, why major, but uh, also very different uh, in a way that you want to make yourself you know, very di are differentiable uh, because it's very easy, you know, uh, let's say for Jack, he writes uh, the same level essay or the very similar Y school essays to 10 different colleges. That is not helpful. The college admission officers, they want to know why you specifically love that, uh, uh, why you love that school and they want to know like how much do you know about that school, you know, how much time do you spend um, researching about the school? So on um, point two, you can see here, academic uh, programs are very important. You know, uh, for Jack, he can mention that he really wants to take a certain statistic uh, classes with professor, let's say ABC, that he's super interested in how big data can be applied right now. He can also mention about, you know, he wants to do a, a research internship with certain professor. Um, how poverty and big data can be connected together, that would be super helpful. Also for Jack, you know, he can mention, you know, what clubs, what activities, what campus activities he wants to do. Let's say he wants to join the big data club to learn more about how to apply visualization for data. Also, it is very important. It is learning more than just the big data club. Uh, it's pretty nerdy, but I guess, um, you know, if he truly likes it. Yeah, I mean, that part is pretty cool. I actually went to, you know, two of the meetings of the Big Data Club. They are pretty nerdy, but I oh, learned. Um, we know you're nerdy, Alan. That, that's why we like you. So. <laughs> For sure. So the third point is on campus culture. It is super important for you to understand that college, to understand that campus, to, to actually understand that city. 
So for me personally, you know, when I do my application, I always spend you know, 30 minutes, one hour <coughs> to go on the website of that college, that university, to actually look through their activities, their campus culture, their you know, well-known events, well-known figure, sometimes even to, you know, uh, to watch some YouTube videos on certain campus activities or certain events last year. That can really help you to understand you know, what is the core culture of that campus, of that university. So uh, together with you know, what Rod has been mentioning about why major, you really want to make your why major and why school you know, one plus one much larger than two. Uh, you want to make sure that your why school and your why major are connected uh, together. A very bad example will be for Jack to say why school because he wants to apply to Columbia because Columbia is in New York. It's in the center of the fashion and, and the music world. That has nothing to do with stat, with soccer, with poverty, with CS. That would be a bad example for him to, to send that essay to Columbia. In fact, he should be writing about how the resources, how the alumni, how being in center of you know, a financial world, an economic world, how being able to go to you know, Washington DC to, to maybe uh, listening on Senate committees to, to join the policy makers, that would be super crucial. A great way to mention it is to actually mention the <coughs> collaboration between uh, United Nations and Colombia. That can be very helpful to say you know, why I want to uh, go to uh, Colombia too. And so might the, I just add, um, I think this is very important. Um, you know, Alan was mentioning Colombia. Um, you know, Columbia has economics program that's second to none. And uh, they're in the same building as public policy, the SIPA building, as people say it. Um, so if you knew that for a fact, and if you want to take, if you can take advantage of it, that shows very strongly that you have done research. Um, you know, not just that New York City is the, the center of the universe and Wall Street is, um, you know, is in New York. Um, I, I remember I had a student that I mentored several years ago. He was looking to Stanford and I said, why do you want to go to Stanford? He said, number one, it has really great weather. Well, I said, that's true, but, um, you know, everybody will uh, agree to it, but it doesn't show who you are. Uh, second, he said, you don't have to graduate with a real degree. You can just graduate with undecided. I said, again, that's true, but it's really for people who want to design their own career and um, you know uh, academic uh, programs not just for people who are slacking off right so so be careful and i might just add the very last point which is think about what other students will write and avoid writing the same things um, because chances are the admission officers have read and heard everything that you have said so be interesting be novel um, if you're interesting, uh, even if your logic is a little bit weaker, um, it shows that you have thought through something. And so, um, you know, I would strongly recommend you to avoid writing the same things as everybody else on these Y school essays. Sorry, Alan. Oh, no, a perfect point. You know, as I mentioned, you don't want to be the 99 percent people like you want to be the one percent you want to write something different something impressive and something interesting for sure uh yes uh, to speed up a little on. bit more i think we ran out of time already okay cool perfect so as ben mentioned you want to make yourself very <coughs> interesting uh, these are some of the tough other supplement questions mentioned you know in the application season and i do want to highlight one thing here you know for chicago you no know, the question is what can actually be divided by zero so for here, you don't need to think about the, the math part. I mean, you can, but you don't have to limit yourself to that. You can also, you know, argue, or you can even define what do you mean by divided? Uh, uh, what do you mean by zero? So there's a lot of space you can talk about. Be fun. I mean, uh, uh, be interesting. Um, have fun doing it. You know, make a nice impression and to uh, remember to call back on your Y schools, your personal statements, your Y majors to make one plus one much larger than two. Alan, you really like the one plus one larger than two, I noticed. I'm loving it. <laughs> okay. All right. So the last slide, um, again, you know, we came up with sort of two uh, made up uh, uh, 
um, applicant. One is Nick, one is Jack. So Nick, a personal statement, uh, he's been interesting history for years and is the vice president of his high school history club. He, play, uh, he plays the violin at school orchestra and has been on multiple tours. Why major? He wants to major in economics because he wants to learn how central banks and the government develop economic policy during crisis or crises. Um, there seem to be so many uh, crises, um, you know, as of late. Why school? He wants to attend Columbia University because he loved the metro life and enjoyed cultural uh, diversity. So that's Nick. And uh, so the parents, to the parents and the students uh, who are listening in, you know, think about which one uh, may be more interesting and have a competitive an edge to get into the school. Um, now, Jack, personal statement, he's been playing soccer since young and joined varsity team in high school. Uh, used to, uh, I used to, what I learned in class and online to apply data analysis in soccer training, eventually helping the team prevail in state championship. Why major? He wants to double major in statistics and computer science to develop model and tools that empower policymakers to better combat poverty and global warming. I think this is an example from the previous pages. And why school? He wants to also attend Columbia University to hone his technical skills while taking advantage of the a specific program to work with community leaders to solve social problems. So I think um, it's probably not a uh, far-fetched to think that Jack may, be, may gain an advantage over Nick because he's more specific uh, in terms of uh, problem, uh, a personal statement. Um, you know, he has done something that's a little bit more interesting than being the president of the history club, playing the violin, you know, something that's very typical, especially for Asian uh, students, right? Chinese students. And then why major? It's a bit more targeted. And the more targeted you are, the better. And also elevating from uh, winning the championship using uh, statistics for baseball to combating poverty, combating poverty and global warming. So something higher up. And then why school? This is not just about, I wanna to go to New York as Alan mentioned, uh, because I love the Metro life, but it's actually taking advantage of a specific program that's only available maybe at Columbia. Now, I, I know that's hard, but it's not impossible to find. And these deep research really make a difference. I think we're done. So, so I guess Q&A, I, I guess I'll say, application essays are not fictions, right? American um, admission officers are looking for evidence, uh, you know, based facts that have shown who you are. And if you don't prepare early, you will be scratching your head to come up with superfluous platitudes. Uh, and that's never good. So start early, not with your essays, but with your essay contents. That's it. Thank you very much, um, Rod and Ellen and the Ben. Um, so for all the families and friends online, what you have just heard from the team is really an overarching strategy, as well as some of the key know-hows um, how do you plan, how do you write a personal statement or additional supplemental essays for the school and really presenting yourself? So for the next five to 10 minutes, what we will be talking about is really how Kairos will be providing all the resources as well as step-by-step -step plan so that we can hold your hands and take you through the journey. You can get into the dream college with ease and confidence. So let me just talk a little bit what you will see if you are becoming the member of Kairos.ai. From the leftmost side, you will actually have a community where you have educators, other students, and other parents coming together, share their plan and steps with you. Moving from left to the right, we also provide both products as well as services. On the product side, we have aggregated all the resources you will need. We will be leveraging big data and artificial intelligence to give you a bite-sized college prep know-hows. Now, 
that alone is not going to be enough. Just because you have the people, you have the resources, still not going to be enough. So the next one on the service side, what we have designed from Kairos side is that we have sprint programs. We run every single quarter, two to three sprint programs, meaning that every single weekend you will have two or three or more workshops that will be working with the high schoolers, getting through how to pick summer programs, how do you write your personal essays, so on and so forth. Along with that, we will also be providing monthly counseling sessions, just like what we do today for webinars. We'll actually, in parallel, we'll be conducting monthly counseling sessions. We'll invite highly qualified counselors like Ben's team and other Harvard admissions officers, etc., to provide these know-hows to you on a monthly basis. And further than that, we also will be providing a group of highly qualified educators for you to engage with them on one on one basis. So between people and the resources and the structured learning, uh, we will should be able to provide all the needs that you you have. Let me talk a little bit what you will see once you go into Kairos.ai products and services. On the left side, there are three ways we'll be working with you on this journey. The first part we call the autopilot, where you will have machine learning and AI guidance week by week, day by day, what you're supposed to do and how do you do it and what goals you will be achieving with that. The next way of delivering the service, we call the menu drive. So if you do have students who are very disciplined, very self-reliant, they can always go into these resources and pull things out that, as they need on their own pace. And the third one is to follow our instructor-led uh, services. Like I said, every day, every week, our educators and coaches will be working with you in real time, giving you the guidance and answering the questions you may have how to do it. Of course, between these three ways of engagement and the end goal is to help our high schoolers to get into the dream college that they wanted to based on their wants and needs, their hopes and dreams, and their weakness and strengths, as well as their personalities. So we do have um, AI-driven recommendation uh, engine that help the high schoolers truly understand who they are and what they should be doing in order to set the right foundation for lifetime achievement and happiness. Very quickly touch upon the sprint programs. Every quarter you will see will be running how to apply for summer programs and internships. How do you prepare for your SAT, ACT test? How do you do scholarship research or financial aid for that matter? And how do you prepare for AP test? Of course, today we spend a lot of time talking about how to write different types of essays that are required by different colleges. And we'll spend more time go into five week in-depth essay workshop uh, in July time frame. Of course, as we get closer to submitting the application package, we'll also have these intense workshops and going through the application process itself and do more test prep. Now for the monthly counseling sessions, um, today is just one example, but we have various topics for you to understand how do you pick the right major and the right college, liberal arts versus research. How do you ace the standard test? And of course, to discover your own passion, to ensure your long-term success, we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about selecting extracurricular activities and do project collaborations. Now, towards the end, as you bring everything together, you are going to 
do letters of recommendations. You're going to polish your resumes and the, perhaps going through um, the interviews and campus visit. Now, for some families who are really interested in finding the best education in the most affordable way, we also have plans for two plus two. So that give you the financial means to achieve the best education that you are looking for. I'm not going to talk too much about the weekly uh, mission here, um, but I do want to emphasize that for the parents, you are in the knowing space and our product will provide constant um, progress report and so that you know exactly where your uh, children's progress are at, but it really that's still not enough. Knowing is not enough. We are really going to be working on daily basis, on weekly basis to ensure your child reaches the dream college that he or she desires. Without any further ado, what I would like to show you for the next five minutes is to show you what the product looks like. So when you sign in, into our product. This is what we call the manual drive. 